Hello, my lovely kids and the future doctors. How are you all? I hope you all are doing well. So today we are going to start a new chapter that is transport and plant. So we are going to discuss PYQs and some important questions related to this chapter. So this chapter is very easy, right? <laughs> and yes, we are going to discuss as much as question we can. So let's start with the first question. Question number one, match the following and this question came in NEET 2021. You have to match the column one with column two. Cohesion, addition, surface tension, gutation. What do you think is cohesion? Cohesion means when water molecules they are basically attracted towards each other. So cohesion means attraction among water molecules. This is what we call as cohesion when water molecules are attracted towards each other, right? What is addition? Addition means attraction between water molecule and the vessel and tracheate surface. Right? So water molecules, first thing that there is attraction among water molecules that will hold the water molecules together. And second is that water molecules are attached or by, uh, basically are attracted towards the wall of tracheids and vessels. And surface tension, which means that the water molecules, they are more closely placed, they are more attracted towards each other in liquid phase than in gaseous phase, right? So surface tension here tells us that water molecules are more attracted towards each other in liquid phase than in gases than in gases right this is surface tension and gutation gutation is basically water loss in the form of liquid phase what is cohesion attraction among the water molecules what is addition attraction of water molecules towards polar surface and what is surface tension? That water molecules are more closely placed or more attracted towards each other in liquid phase than in gaseous phase. Right? So because of cohesion, addition and surface tension, water molecules basically have very high tensile strength so that uh, their attraction could not be broken up by any forces. Right? So they will be pulled towards the upper surface of plant. So the answer here will be that A is matched with second and B is matched with fourth, C is matched with first and D is matched with third. So option number fourth, option number fourth. So there are direct terms here and there are direct statements for them here. Very direct question. I hope this is clear to all of you. So the answer for question one will be option number fourth. Option number fourth. Okay. Next is the process responsible for facilitating loss of water in liquid from the tip of grass blade at night in early morning is. We call it root pressure. How does this root pressure develop? What do you think? So these are root cells. Right. We will assume that these are root cells. So now what will happen? With the help of ATP, ions will come into the cell. With the help of ATP, ions will come into the cells. 
because of that what will happen the solute concentration inside the cell increases so i'll just do it what i'll just make a one large cell i'll just make a one large cell here suppose this is a root cell right so because of atp with the help of atp ions are basically transported into the root cell and because of that the solute concentration increases if the solute concentration increases the water will come inside right the water will come inside right now it will put pressure what type of pressure pushing pressure what type of pressure pushing pressure it will push the water molecules to a small height it will push the water molecules up to a small height molecules up to a small height right so up to a small height gutation basically can transport water because of pushing pressure more water molecules are coming they are pushing other water molecules to go up right so it will go up for certain height that is known as root pressure that is known as root pressure so in certain small plants the root basically because of root pressure these water molecule reaches to the tip of leaf and the water molecules are lost in the form of water molecules that is known as gutation that is known as gutation so there will be another question that will be coming uh, regarding the gutation so i'll explain there that what is gutation okay so yes first the ion will come with the help of atp then it will be followed by the entry of water the water will put Uh, basically will put pressure on the other water molecules to go up to a certain height right so answer will be root pressure what is imbibation imbibation means the absorption of liquid solution uh, the absorption of liquid by the solid surface without forming any solution is known as imbibation like uh, like your wood door during rainy season it got stuck because the wood basically has got got swollen due to the moisture around it so that is also an example of imbibation so wood has basically absorbed the moisture and it gets swollen and because of that the door basically got stuck plasmolysis means i'll write here that what is imbibation it is absorption of water molecules or liquid by the solid by the solid surface without forming solution without forming solution that is known as imbibation what is plasmolysis plasmolysis means the shrinkage of the shrinkage of protoplast protoplast means what plasma membrane plus protoplasm plasma membrane plus protoplasm is known as protoplast so basically protoplast is a plant cell without cell wall okay so the shrinkage of protoplast um due to exit of water because there is a exit of water from from plant cell when plant cell is placed in hypertonic solution when a plant cell 
is placed in hypertonic solution you guys must have an idea that what is a hypertonic solution hypertonic solution is what in which the solute concentration is high than the cell right so water molecules will move out from the cell and will go into the solution because in solution the solute solute concentration is high right so i am again telling you hypertonic hyper word means high right hyper means high so there is a high concentration of solute right there is a high concentration of solute in the solution and when we place the plant cell into the solution the water will move out from the plant cell and will go into the solution and the plant cell the protoplast of plant cell will shrink due to exit of water that is known as plasmolysis and what is transpiration transpiration is a loss of water in the form of water vapor in the form of water vapor from the aerial part of the plant from aerial part of plant that is known as transpiration that is known as transpiration but here our answer will be root pressure because of root pressure we can see gutation what is gutation the loss of water in the form of liquid and the loss of water in the form of water vapor is transpiration so gutation occurs because of high root pressure because of high root pressure due to entry of water molecules which are basically putting pressure on each other to go up to a certain height i hope this is clear to all of you so answer here will be root pressure next is select the incorrect statement you have to find out the incorrect statement here let's see the movement of minerals in xylem is unidirectional yes it is from root to the upper part root to the upper part of the plant it is unidirectional unloading of sucrose at the sink does not involve the utilization of atp no it does involve it does involve the atp so what is this unloading i will tell you but if this is your sieve cells or sieve tube cells i'm just giving you the brief idea here so in mesophyll cells the sugar is prepared now this sugar from one cell to another right it will go into the companion cell this is companion cell so this is sieve tube this is companion cell now the sugar will enter into companion cell right from companion cell it will enter into sieve tube with the help of atp with the help of atp now the sugar basically is transported into the sieve tube this is known as loading this is known as loading of sugar loading of sugar into the sieve tube into the sieve tube right now this is the area where the sugar is required this is companion cell and this is the area this is the sink where sugar is required so sink is the area where sugar is required right so now what will happen from the adjacent xylem from the adjacent xylem the water will move here 
water will move here it will become phloem sap right now the phloem sap will move towards the sink phloem sap and out of the phloem sap what will happen the sugar will go into the sink because it is where it is required and with the help of atp with the help of atp and this is known as unloading sugar will come here and the water will move into the xylem right so what happened here the sugar is formed in mesophyll cell then sugar will transported in companion cell and from companion cell it will transfer into sieve tube cell right with the help of atp that is known as loading now because of sugar content is high in the sieve tube the water will move here from the adjacent xylem now the phloem sap has been prepared the phloem sap will move from here towards the sink and there the sugar will be unloaded with the help of atp in sink and the water will move back into the xylem water will move back into the xylem right so both loading and unloading requires atp both loading and unloading requires atp so that's why this statement is wrong our answer will be two here let's see other statements as well the elements most easily mobilized in plant from one region to another are phosphorus sulfur nitrogen potassium yes we call it easily or readily mobilized elements right at some places sulfur it is also categorized into non mobilized animal uh, element sorry but here we will categorize sulfur into mobilized one and the non mobilized elements are which cannot move which are stuck at one place example is calcium example is calcium so whenever a part is old in a plant right so it will give away its element to the younger one so the old leaf is thinking now it's my time to go i'll um, i should basically give the elements to the younger one so yes the old leaf give basically the most of the element to the younger one and those element that can move from old leaf to new leaf they are known as readily mobilized en uh, element and those element which are stuck in the old leaf and it cannot move and go into the young leaf it is known as non mobilized animal uh, element example calcium example calcium so yes sulfur is uh, somehow a controversial element which can be categorized into both category but mostly yes uh, just consider it it under the readily mobilized uh, elements transport of molecules in phloem can be bidirectional yes bachche correct because it can be from leaf to root and it can be root to upper part so the food is synthesized in the leaf so generally what happens is that the food moves from leaf to root right and when the leaves are not there when leaves are not there what happens the stored food material into the root will go up in the upper part of the plant so yes it is bidirectional yes it is bidirectional so 1 3 and 4 are correct our second statement is incorrect that the loading of sucrose at sink it does require atp but here it has been written does not so that's why this statement is incorrect this statement is incorrect i hope this is clear to all of you question number 3 let's see question number 
xylem translocates what does xylem transport water only no water and mineral salts only no water mineral salts and some organic nitrogen only no water mineral some organic nitrogen and hormones yes ncert statement direct ncert statement so yes xylem can transport or xylem transports water mineral salts some organic nitrogen and hormones as well i hope this is clear to everyone there is no doubt here this is direct ncert statement <coughs> very easy one right let's move on to the next question question number 5 what is the direction of movement of sugar in phloem i told you it is bi directional and in some case we also call it multi directional because food is going down food, food is going sideways food is also going up so technically it is multi directional but yeah it is it can be considered as a bi directional why because it can go up from the leaf towards root right and it also go up from root towards upper part right so that's why we call it bi directional bi directional but it also it can also be multi directional why i just told you that food can go downward food can go upward food can go sideways so it can also be multi directional answer here is fourth answer is here is fourth that is bi directional so as you can see here that not so difficult question uh, basically were asked from this chapter stomatal movement is not affected by right the role of stomata is transpiration transpiration gaseous exchange these are the role of stomata right so stomatal movement is not affected by let's see temperature it is affected by temperature right light yes basically blue light causes maximum opening of stomata and o2 concentration no not so much it can affect uh, it can give a very really negligible uh, basically it can have a very negligible effect on the stomata but it we will not count it and co2 concentration of course so because a stomata is involved in the gaseous exchange so when it will open when it will close it will depend on temperature light and co2 concentration around it but not dependent upon the o2 concentration it will be of least concern that's why we will choose this it will affect but very least concern so that's why we will choose o2 concentration the that stomatal opening and closing here stomatal movement means opening and closing of stomatal pore stomatal pore this is question number 6 i hope this is clear to all of you let's move on to the next question which of the following facilitate the opening of stomatal aperture or pore contraction of outer wall of guard cell decrease in turgidity of guard cell when the guard cell is turgid decrease in turgidity which means guard cell is flaccid due to exit of water due to exit of water so when guard cell is flaccid stomatal pore is closed 
store metal pore is closed so that's why this statement is wrong so when guard cell lose water it becomes flaccid flaccid means flat flaccid means flat so when the water comes out from the guard cell it become flat and the store metal pore become closed and when it become turgid full of water the store metal pore is open radial orientation of cellulose microfibrillin in the cell yes so here as you can see there are there is radial arrangement like this of cellulose cellulosic fiber there is a radial arrangement not longitudinal this radial arrangement basically prevent the collapse of guard cell due to continuous water loss and gain so these are subsidiary cells these basically are the protective cells for guard cells these are guard cells and this is radial arrangement of cellulosic fiber arrangement of cellulosic fiber right and here longitudinal no last is also wrong so third will be our answer radial arrangement like this not longitudinal radial so option number 3 this yes this radial arrangement of cellulose helps in basically what helps in uh helps in the basically uh the opening and closing of cell wall the opening and closing of cell wall right so option here answer will be up uh, here option number third right radial not longitudinal arrangement let's see the next question i hope this is clear to all of you the water potential of pure water is zero right so here the वॉटर पोटेंशियल ऑफ प्योर वॉटर वट इज वॉटर पोटेंशियल बच्चे केमिकल पोटेंशियल ऑफ वॉटर वॉटर पोटेंशियल मीन्स केमिकल पोटेंशियल ऑफ वॉटर मोर द वॉटर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ वॉटर मोर द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ वॉटर मोर द मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ वॉटर मोर विल बी द water potential right so as we know pure water has only water molecules they are having only water molecules which means it will have maximum value maximum value is zero we we consider that the maximum value is zero right so what is water potential it is a chemical potential of water more the concentration of water is more will be the value of water potential as we know that the pure water has only water molecules it will have the maximum value that is zero maximum value that is zero right what is solute potential solute potential means whenever we add solute into a water of course its water potential decreases how much it decreases it is known as solute potential so here if we add solute to the pure water then the water potential will decrease and become negative and become negative because the lower value than 0 is in negative minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 5 so more the solute less is the value of water potential more solute means 
lesser value of water potential right so the solute concentration is in inversely proportional to the water potential so more solute we add there will be a more decrease in the value of water potential so yes the value of or water potential of pure water is zero clear everyone very direct question let's see next water vapor come out from a plant leaf through the stomatal opening through the same stomatal opening carbon dioxide diffuses into the plant during photosynthesis reason out the above statement using one of the following options right so they are saying that water vapor and carbon dioxide both are basically going from the same pore so basically uh, you have to reason out the uh, you have to choose the correct option with respect to this both processes can't happen simultaneously no right it can happen simultaneously both processes can happen together because diffusion coefficient of water and the co2 is different yes bachche here your diffusion coefficient in layman language it is that how faster it can go from a Uh, uh basically from a structure how faster it can diffuse from a structure right it is just a layman language you don't have to go into the depth of what that that what is diffusion coefficient right so you can say that diffusion coefficient is basically to calculate that how fast faster it can diffuse so it is different of plant and uh, water and co2 that's why uh, basically from the same pore CO two and water vapor can go. The above process happens only at the night night time. No, one process occur during day and other at night. No, right? Both can occur simultaneously because the diffusion coefficient of both is different. Option number two is correct. Option number two is correct. I hope this is clear to all of you. Next is question number ten. A few drop of sap are collected by cutting across a plant stem by a suitable method. The sap was tested chemically. Which one of the following test result indicate the phloem sap? Phloem sap is basically alkaline. Phloem sap is basically alkaline. Why? Because the phloem basically export protons to get the sugar. Phloem export hydrogen out of the cell, right? so it means what happens the hydrogen or proton concentration decreases which mean high ph and high ph means alkaline low ph means acidic so yes phloem or sieve tube export out or the phloem export out the protons during the transportation that's why the proton concentration decreases which results into high ph and which results into alkaline condition so yes phloem sap is alkaline phloem sap is alkaline phloem sap contains sugar mostly sugar sucrose water from the vessels which came from the vessel and hormones amino acids so together they are called as phloem sap this was question number 10 guys i hope there is no doubt till here if you have any doubt please write it in the comment section if you have any doubt which one gives the most valid and recent explanation for stomatal movement that how stomatal open and close potassium influx and efflux potassium influx and efflux 
so i will explain one that the opening of stomata i will explain this opening of stomata so bachche suppose this is the guard cell right and this is the vacuole so now what will happen bachche starch which is present in the guard cell is incompletely oxidized and form phosphoenol pyruvate you don't have to remember it i'm just explaining that how this potassium influx influx means entry and ex exit helps in the closing and opening of stomata so phosphoenol pyruvate is being converted into malic acid now malic acid is dissociated into protons and malic malic ion now what will happen bachche the hydrogen will go into the epidermal cell it will go out and what will happen instead of this uh, in place of this proton there will be a entry of potassium there will be a entry of potassium and also some chlorine there will be a entry of potassium and chlorine so proton will come out and in place of proton the potassium and chlorine will come in now what will happen the malate and potassium they will go into the vacuole they will together potassium malate will go into the vacuole now what will happen this will increase the solute concentration this will increase the solute concentration now what happens when the solute concentration increases the water will flow in water will flow in and that results into what turgid the guard cell become turgid full of water and the stomatal pore is open so metal pore is open right so what happened due to entry of potassium the malate and potassium they go into the vacuole and the solute concentration increases i told you what happens when the solute concentration increases there will be the entry of water right due to entry of water the guard cell has lots of water it become turgid it will swell and open the it's it was like this and now it will open the stomatal pore because it has become turgid turgid means full of water the stomatal pore become open right so due to potassium entry the stomatal pore is open and due to potassium exit the stomatal will close stomatal pore will closed stomatal pore will be closed right i hope this is clear to all of you no need to go into the details just remember due to entry pore is open and due to exit the pore is closed right pore is closed i hope this is clear let's go to the question number 12 transpiration and root pressure cause water to rise in plant by pulling and pushing respectively so transpiration what transpiration does i will explain here so what happens in transpiration the water basically moves out right because of that it will basically get the water from the leaf leaf will get water from the stem and stem will get water from the root so there is 
pulling of water because of transpiration because of transpiration we call it transpiration pull we call it transpiration pull and pushing i have already explained you that water push each other to go up to a certain height and here it is pulling the transpiration pull is pulling the water and in root pressure it is pushing the water pushing is root pressure and pulling is transpiration pull clear everyone option number 4th option number 4th this is due to transpiration so answer will be question number 4th let's see question number 13 in a ring girdled girdled plant what happens so i will tell you what exactly was done here so bache this is uh, this was the plant and what happens is that a ring of bark is removed ring of bark is removed so as we know that bark contains phloem as well phloem so actually we have removed phloem so here no phloem no phloem is present here because we have removed the bark and we know bark has phloem so what will happen now the when the food is come here it will accumulate it here root does not get food root does not get food so which means the root will die first then the entire plant first the root will die and then the entire plant so what happened here the ring of bark bark is removed and we know that the bark contains phloem so in this part there is no phloem and food is coming from the upper part and the root will not get the food and it will die first and then the entire plant will die ultimately so in normal condition we will consider that the food is coming from the leaf food is coming from the leaf okay in the normal condition we will consider it clear everyone question number 13 let's move on to the question number 14 root pressure develops due to what active absorption there will be active absorption of ions followed by water entry right first by the with the help of atp the ions they come into the cell then it is followed by the entry of water and ultimately it will cause root pressure pushing pressure we call it root pressure clear very easy very direct question we have already discussed this what is active what is root pressure so first the ions are uh, basically taken up by the cells with the help of atp solute concentration increases because of that the water will also enter and that cause the pushing pressure and that push pushing pressure is known as root pressure that is known as root pressure option number 4 will be our answer option number 4 will be our answer Next let's see question number 15 A column of water within the xylem vessels of a tall tree does not break under its weight because of tensile strength of water 
water molecules are so together that it basically they are not broken up by any force why because of cohesion because of adhesion and because of surface tension because of these three things water molecules they are basically attracted towards each other they are attracted towards the wall right so no force is able to break their contact they are having high tensile strength they are having high tensile strength so without breaking up they are going to the upper side they are going towards the upper side answer will be 15 uh, sorry up answer will be question uh, option number 1 here option number 1 clear everyone let's see the next which of the following criteria does not pertain to facilitated transport uphill transport does not they have written they have asked does not uphill no it is downhill transport downhill transport means from the region of high concentration to low concentration so in facilitated transport the material is being transported from the region of high concentration to low concentration required a special protein membrane yes bachche this is the lipid as we know the structure of plasma membrane is majorly composed of proteins and lipids this is lipid molecule and this is protein this is lipid bilayer so yes material is being transported from high concentration to low high concentration to low concentration so high concentration to low concentration no ATP is required no ATP is required right next is high selectivity yes it is highly selectively selectivity uh, selective sorry because certain protein will transport certain ions only it will not transport any random ion right it will basically transport only specific ion transport saturation yes so whenever the protein basically every protein is specific for each ion when all the protein are busy with ions they won't be able to transport any more ion that is known as saturation that all the proteins are busy they cannot transport any other ions right so yes they can saturate so suppose there are 100 proteins and there are 100 ions to be transported so protein one protein will get attached to the one ion so 100 protein will get attached to the 100 ions now if uh, another if one extra ion will come it will it won't be able to get transported because all the 100 proteins are busy right so option number uh, one will be our answer it is not uphill transport it is downhill the uh, material or the iron or the solute is getting transported from high concentration to low concentration. Next is the gutation is a result of, I told you, high root pressure. There is a high pushing pressure of water and there is a very low transpiration, very low, negligible transpiration. So water is not getting out in the form of water vapor but there is so much root pressure that suppose this is so there is so much pressure so much pressure let me again make it.
so there is so much pressure of the water molecules that it will come out in the form of water vapor sorry liquid form this is known as guttation due to root pressure right it is basically pushing the water molecules up to a certain height this can be you can see it in very small herbaceous plant not very tall because guttation cannot transport water in such a to up to a uh, such a tall plants it will only transport into a very small plants in the tall plants transpiration pull will be able to transport water up to a certain height up to 100 meters 300 meters yes next is which of the following structures between two plants is an effective transport pathway plasmodesmata as you know that two plant cells right they are basically connected with plasmodesmata this is plant cell a this is plant cell b and they are connected with the help of plasmodesmata it's like a window it's like a window between the two plants through which they can exchange things they can exchange things let's see question number 19 guard cell help in you will know all know the answer transpiration yes guttation no fighting against infection protection against graze grazing no they help in transpiration and gaseous exchange they help in transpiration and gaseous exchange guttation occurs through hydrothods the name of that structure is hydrothods transpiration occurs through stomata and guttation occurs through a structure or opening known as hydrothods but here it has been asked that guard cell helps in it help in transpiration it helps in transpiration so i will again write it here that if the guard cell is turgid then the pore is open if the guard cell is flat because of exit of water that is placid the pore is closed the pore is closed question number 20 two cells a and b are contiguous cell a has osmotic pressure op here means osmotic pressure tp here is turgor pressure and dpd is diffusion pressure deficit you don't have to calculate anything in this question just remember one thing that the water movement net water movement occurs from low dpd cell having low dpd to cell having high dpd dpd in the layman layman language is thirst right so low dpd means low thirst and high dpd matlab means high thirst so here cell a has dpd value what 3 atm and cell b has a dpd 
which is 5 atm right so here as you can see it has the lower value less thirst lower value means less thirst it can give water but 5 atm is the higher value which means high thirst which means high thirst this cell is thirsty it requires water it requires water so b basically uh, the cell b has what high thirst and cell a has low thirst right so the water will move from a to b because b has more thirst more value of dpt means more thirst so the water will move from a to b b requires more water because it is more thirsty less cell a is less thirsty right so it will give away its water so movement of water will be from cell a to b right so water always move from uh, low dpt region to high dpt region to high dpt region it will move from cell a to cell b right option number 1 will be our answer let's move on to the next question question number 21 the translocation of organic solute in sieve tube is supported by mass flow hypothesis it requires atp and carriers we also call it mass flow hypothesis or suction flow suction pressure mass flow of oh, suction pressure is basically related to dpd here we can uh, say that it is mass flow right because sugar is unloaded and loaded with the help of atp atp is required mass flow hypothesis next is potometer it basically calculates calculation of rate of transpiration we can calculate the rate of transpiration by potometer it works on the principle that the amount of water absorbed by equals to the amount of water transpired right so what is happen here this is a tube this is a potometer at what at one end it is basically dipped into water water and here you can see the scale marking this is a scale this is a scale and there is a plant here right so what will happen now we will introduce a water bubble we will introduce a water bubble air bubble sorry right we will introduce a air bubble now it will transpire it will do transpiration it will lose water more it will lose water more it will basically there will be a suction of water right there is a absorption of water more it will transpire more will be the absorption of water air bubble right we will basically track the movement of air bubble and we will see that how much water it absorbed right so potometer works on the principle that the amount of uh, it basically we uh, think that the amount of water it transpires equal to the amount of water it absorbed and we will track this movement with the help of air bubble and we have scales on the potometer so we can say at what time at what position air bubble is where we will write the number right so yes potometer works on the principle that the amount of water absorbed is equal to the amount of water transpired so whatever 
amount of water it transpire it is absorbing the water at that speed only right so we can use potometer to calculate the rate of transpiration to calculate the rate of transpiration next is when the water moves through a semi permeable membrane then which of the following pressure develops turgor pressure is developed due to entry of water turgor pressure is developed during the uh turgor pressure is developed due to the entry of water and what is osmotic pressure osmotic pressure is pressure applied external pressure applied to stop the entry of water pressure applied to stop the entry of water to stop the entry of water right osmotic pressure basically is applied externally to stop the entry of water turgor pressure is developed due to the entry of water next question the water potential and osmotic potential of pure water is zero and zero water potential we have discussed what is osmotic potential this is also known as solute potential psi s right so solute potential basically represent that uh, when we add solute right that how much the water potential decreases how much water potential decreases that represents the solute potential so what is solute potential by adding the solute how much water potential decreases that represent the solute potential both are zero for pure water both are zero for pure water i hope this is clear let's see the next the opening and closing of stomata is due to change in turgor pressure i told you if guard cell is turgid the pore is open if the guard cell has water the pore is open if the guard cell is flaccid flat due to exit of water the pore is closed the pore is closed right so change in turgor pressure results into opening and closing of stomata results into opening and closing of stomata we have already discussed this stomata of cam plant cam plant is basically xerophytic plant desert plant which basically grow in dry condition where the water where there where, uh, where there is a scarcity of water right are always open no open during the day no they open during the night and close during the day to prevent water loss to prevent water loss because they already are present in a very dry condition so their stomata is closed during the day and open during the night such stomata is known as scotoactive stomata scotoactive stomata such type of stomata is known as scotoactive stomata yes the stomata opens during night and close during day opens during night and close during the day cam plant basically xerophytic plant that are found in the desert or where the water there is a scarcity of water and such stomata is known as scarcity uh, oh sorry scotoactive stomata this was question number 26 let's see question number 27 loading in phloem is related to we have already told you increase of in sugar in phloem or loading of sugar loading of sugar elongation of phloem cell no separation of phloem parenchyma no strengthening of 
phloem fiber no loading means with respect to phloem is loading of sugar into the sieve tube into sieve tube this is known as loading clear very 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 easy question we have already discussed this next question 28 bidirectional translocation of solute takes place in we all we know the answer of this is well we have already discussed phloem in xylem it is unidirectional from root to upper part only whereas in phloem it is bidirectional we have discussed it two three times right this was question number 28 Next is question twenty nine. Wooden doors and windows swell up and stuck in rainy season. I told you this. That is due to imbibition. The absorption of liquid by solid surface without forming any solution. Without forming solution such thing is known as imbibation so due to which our doors our wooden doors they get stuck during rainy season because they have absorbed moisture they have absorbed moisture imbibation let's move on to the last question water channels Water channels are made up of eight similar types of aquaporin. No, different types. Eight different types of aquaporin involved in active transport. No, facilitated. Passive transport. Passive transport. There is no expenditure of ATP here. Involved in facilitated diffusion. Yes, more than one option is correct. No. only one option is correct that the water channels that helps in the transport of water basically is a type of facilitated diffusion passive transport no atp is involved passive here means no atp is involved without atp the material is getting transported option number 3 will be our answer option number 3 will be our answer we can write it facilitated so i hope every question is clear to you guys so as you can figure out that these type of very very simple type of questions basically have been asked in from this chapter so see you in the next lecture with more interesting chapter and with more and more interesting questions so till then take care bye bye